So are my PPT is visible to you? Can yes, sir. No, not yes. Now okay. Good afternoon, respected director, sir, faculty member, dear student and audience. I, Dr. Sanj Kumar Verma, Associate Professor, ISF College of Pharmacy, would like to welcome eminent scientist Dr. Suresh Tharedal, sir, Associate Professor, School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Central University of Punjab, Batinda, at the online platform of ISF College of Pharmacy for delivering talk on quality control of pharmaceuticals. I request to respected director, sir, please enlighten about the lecture series and welcome the speaker. Over to director, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Sandkumar Barmaji. So on behalf of ISF College of Pharmacy, I welcome today's expert, very, very renowned, dynamic, young researcher, Dr. Suresh Tharejaji. And uh, so I welcome you, sir. And the purpose of this behind ISF uh, dialogue series is professor, they are very, very eminent, dynamic, and they have the lot of so considering of all these parameters, our team of the IQAC. Dr. Siddharth Manji, he take the lead and invite the uh, different different field professors and associate professor to deliver the talk. So first of all, I am thankful to Dr. Suresh Tareja ji for accepting our invitation and uh, you have uh, chosen the topic quality control of pharmaceuticals. So obviously it is very, very important to all the researchers, wedding pharmacists, as well as is the direct approach to the industry. So I think without delay, I request to Dr. Sandkumar Barmaji, please proceed. And I am thankful to the organizing committee, uh, coordinator of Dr. Sandkumar Barmaji for give the opportunity to interact on this platform. And I also welcome of the people, those who are the connect with the YouTube channel also. So they can also ask the question through the chat box. And after the lecture, this lecture also delivered through the YouTube channel. And you can send your suggestions or questions so that we can also interact with our uh, speakers. And as and when required, we will put the all inquiries accordingly. Because this is the time bound program and uh, this is the recorded of the program so that we will not to take the direct lives of the inquiries. So I hope that uh, everybody take care and uh, I hope it will be the very, very effective, useful to each and everybody, even that I have come to know this topic. So I am very, very happy quality control of pharmaceuticals being a pharmaceutics person. So I hope that it will be the very, very useful. And uh, yesterday I am taking one of the honey test, release one of the, this is the hot sip. Cost of this is the 10 rupees. So I feel and discuss our peoples. Okay, if one of the product, this is the available in the market in the launch in the format, so why not we can develop this types of the product. So I hope that in the coming days we will release some of the product with the collaboration of the Central University of the Batinda. Thank you very much, Dr. Saab, for accepting our invitation and uh, you have given a very, very precious time. Over to Dr. Sant Kumar Barmaji. Thanks, respected sir, for enlightening about uh, our lecture series. Uh, with these words, I would like to uh, invite our uh, today's speaker, speaker Dr. Suresh Suresh Sareja, sir, for his talk. Over to Dr. Suresh Sareja, sir. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sant Kumar Verma, coordinator of this uh, program, and uh, I'm especially I'm thankful to Honorable Director, sir, Professor G D Gupta ji, for inviting me for this talk. So I'm uh, going to deliver a talk on. Uh, so it's a general talk which I'm going to deliver on quality control of pharmaceuticals. You know, question arises, uh, so hopefully my slides are visible to all. So question arises, what, what actually the quality control is and what is the necessity, you know, for ordinary persons like who are living, who are not related to pharmaceuticals, they, they are not concerned with this thing. But this is a very, very important question for all of us who are actually directly or indirectly associated with this pharmaceuticals. So, 
quality control you know it's very very important starting from the you know you will going to take up the raw material to the final product the quality of the product is very very important and the main purpose of quality control department is to check whether your starting material is of desired quality to the end quality now this is my new difference between you know quality assurance and quality control department both the department they are having a different role but quality control is the department who will going to make sure that the product of a desired quality is up, so that uh, approved so you, you must have seen there are so many product available in the market with a tick mark uh, written over it with a word called as qc approved now same is applicable here also so it basically refers to process and procedure designed to ensure that the result of uh, laboratory analysis are consistent they are comparable they are accurate and they are within specified so basically the whole process of quality control it starts with the sample collection so it basically starts not only with the final uh, you know starts with the raw material and it basically covers the whole process will go on till the product is released into the market so it ends with the reporting of the data so the final all the information about the final product whether it will be approved or not approved this has been done by the quality control department so its basically purpose is to analyze to check the uh, whether the data is within the specified limit and basically it is achieved through it's a totally laboratory operation so it is achieved through laboratory control of analytical so there i told you previously also to maintain these quality control st uh, standard you have to make sure you have to use specified procedure you have to assure that the quality of a product should be maintained throughout the process so it involves both so now the quality assurance will cover both manufacturing as well as qc component so quality the purpose of quality assurance is to make all the documents to prepare all the protocols so that the product of desired quality is obtained so its qa is actually also known as is heart and soul of quality control so when you will going to say qa qa is a combination of qc plus gmp or other quality system so so this whole quality system it basically it is having two component one is called a quality assurance and other is quality assurance uh, assurance another is called as quality control so quality assurance is a part of qmp plan by quality control it's a very it is actually refers to the inspection phase of the quality issue so here we will going to create we will going to design the process we will going to create create the protocols here while in quality control we will go it involves basically verification that include testing of the power products to ensure that they met the standard of safety and efficacy so here is a proactive approach while the quality control is a reactive approach so her purpose is we have to be very very proactive so that there should not be any defect in the process so that a product of desired quality is obtained while here this is a technique qc quality control is a technique to identify the defects in the quality of product after they have been happened now here you require regulatory reviews while in quality control it requires quality assurance and regulatory review so it's a basically process oriented which will going to optimize the process while quality control is a product oriented process so but actually you will see quality control is actually a component of quality assurance so you know there are two type of analysis which are basically used in qc which we people are using in pharmaceuticals and the first type of analysis is called as qualitative analysis and the second type of analysis is called as quantitative analysis so these are the two different tools which quality control people are using in the pharmaceuticals so quality uh, qualitative analysis will going to help in identifying so it will going to tell you it, the identity or the confirm the identity of any compound or the pharmaceutical so here we will going to include so many there so many processes which were which are used the techniques which are used for identifying so if we want to identify whether a particular powder is is the paracetamol or not and so not every white powder will not be paracetamol so that process of identifying whether this uh, compound is paracetamol or not we have to use some technique these techniques fall under the category of qualitative analysis while there is another component which is also very very important 
that is called as quantity so to confirm yeah how much it is present that can be done with the help of quantitative analysis so in quantitative analysis we basically we are using uv fluorometry then hp hptlc hplc and lcm while for qualitative analysis just for identification we are using tlc we can use dsc also xrpd electrophoresis and ir so in uh, qualitative like i told you previously it will going to confirm the purity of compound like uh, it will going to confirm whether a particular analyte is present or not while in quantitative it will going to tell you the exact quantum of analyte how much a particular amount is present so it include uh, your uh, basic technique like elemental characterization it can be done with the help of titrimetric analysis you can uh, we can also use like technique like tlc here we require hplc and hp now the thing is like qualitative analysis you can do with the help of simple laboratory test uh, simple uh, confirmatory test also but for this quantitative analysis you require specific the sophisticated tools nowadays uh, this without these tools to confirm the quantity to carry out assay or the confirmation of the or quantitative analysis is not always feasible so what we are using we are using gcms lcms and nmr these are the techniques which perform both the task both qualitative and quantitative this is the reason these sophisticated tools are widely used for qualitative as well as quantitative analysis so this is a uh, complete process it start with the analysis then evaluation then to improve the process then carry out the process then finally approval and you will going to get a result of desired quality this is whole quality control process so if your results are not of the desired quality then you will start again from the beginning you will going to analyze the result then again evaluate process will be repeated till you will going to get a product of desired so there are two major component which involved in the quality aspect is precision and accuracy actually precision is a may useful term which is used in pharmacy that means uh, actually reproducibility of your result so if uh, i will going to say my result are reproducible but not accurate so that means whatsoever analysis you are carrying out there is some you can say that is a going in a right direction like you can see the first scene all the arrows they are marked at a particular center point so what you will see the location of these arrows so you can see all the arrows the position is same that means your results are reproducible and simultaneously they are accurate also so now the second arrow you can see they are reproducible but their results are not accurate so what we require in pharmaceuticals is we require both reproducibility as well as accuracy now in the third result results are accurate but they are not reproducible so we don't want the second situation also we don't want the third situation also we actually require the first one so you can see in the first one good accuracy good precision in the second one poor accuracy good precision and the third one poor accuracy and poor precision so what we want we want our results to be like this we don't want this scattered results right so the purpose of doing uh, any qualitative analysis is uh, to get precise result to get more reproducible result you know reproducibility will will going to vary with the condition so we want our result to be more precise and more accurate so these are the elements of a quality control system which we are going to start with the sampling so you have to start with the sampling of the raw material because raw material is a you know first thing from where the quality will be decided if a raw material will not be of desired quality then uh, the chances are that the fi final product will also not be of desired quality so basically the whole element of qc starts with the you know starting material then the starting material the inspection will be there as you will going to take the sample you will going to validate the same sample you will going to record and finally you will going to carry out the finish product you will going to make the finish product and again the element this qc will be there and again this batch inspe inspection will be there so this like this way the whole process will go on it's like a cycle till your product will be approved in the market 
So you can see here these well uh, you can see this uh, bottle of uh, this potassium bromide you can see here the potassium doesn't meet the ACS specification so uh, this is uh, you can see uh, potassium level mentioned here the limit is 0 0.01 but actually the ACS limit is 0 0.05 so like that way if your product is not of desired quality what you will do you have to mention clearly on the label that this is a standard limit and our product is having this much thing this is reality so this is the purpose of a quality control department to tell you how much the content actually present in the particular composition so you can see here function of uh, qc in pharmaceuticals so it will go going to start with the alin analytical method validation then evaluation of the compliant samples, then carry out the sampling and testing, preparation of specification for testing, environmental monitoring. So the environment plays a very crucial role in you know variation of the result. Then simultaneously carry out this uh, stability studies and then investigate if there they are failures, they have to investigate what are the causes of failure so that they can repeat again and find your product will going to approve and will enter into the So there are so many techniques which are instruments uh, which are used for uh, these QC quality, sorry, quality control. So quality control is, you know, nowadays people are in, not using those traditional techniques. They are using these sophisticated instruments that are widely used for this quality control of the pharmaceuticals. This, these include UV spectroscopy, IR spectroscopy, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry. So basically, and they are using in tandem then nmr hplc and hplc so like in a, most of the you know organization now they are having these instruments so they in house they are carrying out testing of this quality control of pharmaceuticals so the well known example i am showing to you now is a quality control through uv spectroscopy so you can see here this is a simple molecule so this basically when treated with the uh, NAD plus, it get oxidized while NAD plus get reduced into NADH. This can be done. So this can be done. How much it is changing in presence of NAD D plus? This can be done with the help of simple UV spectroscope. So you, like if you want to see whether your product is pure, you will get going to get a single peak that indicates your product is pure. And you can see NAD plus you are getting a single peak and you can see the peak so while it is converted into nadh you can see there is the additional peak which appears so that indicates the nad plus is converted into nadh so appearing of additional peak you can see your product is having a mixture so like if you are getting a single peak you can say your compound is basically pure now Appearance of additional peak, that means there is something additional component in it is present in your compound. Now the NAD plus, there is no peak here, but uh, when uh, it gets reduced into NADH, you are you will going to get an additional peak. This is how you can do, you know, uh, analysis, quality control analysis to check uh, whether some impurity is present. You can simply run uh, spectra from 200 to 800 nanometer, the complete UV is visible reason getting a pure single peak you can say my compound is pure there is no impurity present if you are getting multiple peaks so when there are some impurities present that can be quantified with the help of beer lambert's law using uv spectroscopy then other than this uv spectroscopy there is one more instrument which is used uh, widely in the industry you know people are using ir spectrophotometer it's a widely used instrument so simply what they are doing they are comparing the fingerprint reason so the fingerprint reason is used for you know for identification of compound using FTIR so there are lots of there are so many you know in pharmacopoeia they have mentioned this as an instrument a technique for qualitative analysis so here what you are doing for example uh, i've shown here the mixture of uh, there is a formulation containing mannitol and cocaine so what they have done, they have taken a spectra of mixture of both cocaine and mannitol, and then they have taken a spectra of cocaine. Separately, they have taken a spectra of mannitol. When you are going to subtract a mixture from uh, 
this uh, cocaine and mannitol from the mixture, you will going to get a plaque peak. So that confirms mannitol and cocaine were present in this mixture. Like this, you can also carry out quality control or, you know, you can do analysis of any pharmaceutical with the help of IR spectroscopy. Now, the third example is using the gas chromatography. So we all know gas chromatography is used only for volatile compounds over the volatile you can use even you use for organic solvents which are volatile so here you can see this gas chromatograph of an x so that means if your hexane is pure you will going to get only single peak but if it is a mixture of you, know, you can see here hexanes mixture of so many hexanes for different type of isotopes of hexanes so you will going to get multiple peaks like this way we can also check the purity of our chemicals or the solvents or the reagent which are present in the laboratory. So this technique is very widely used for uh, volatile substances. So for volatile substance, you can use GC technique for qualitative purpose. Now mass spectrometry is another technique so uh, that can be used for qualitative purpose. So here, what you are going to take, you are going to take, for example, here the example is naproxen, which is having, you know, a common impurity is acrylic acid. So pharmacopoeia is saying acrylic acid is a common impurity which is present in the naproxen. So what you require, you have to identify whether this acrylic acid is present in naproxen or not. So you are going to take mass spectra, you know, this the molecular ion peak of uh, naproxen, it appears as 231, while for naproxen, it appears as 185. While acrylic acid moiety, the, you will going to get a peak at 229. So if you are getting a peak of 229 in uh, mass spectra of your sample, you can see it contains the additional impurity of acrylic acid. While the base peak for acrylic acid appears at 183. So yeah, now you can see there is only minor difference between aproxin and acrylic acid. Here it is single bond, here it is double. But the, due to the single bond, double bond system, there is a change in the mass and this change can be observed in the mass spectra of any using mass spectra, right? So you can identify naproxen and acrylic acid, sorry, acrylic acid impurity in the naproxen. Now, HPLC. HPLC is uh, another technique that is widely used for quality control of the pharmaceuticals. So you can uh, simply run a HPLC and you will going to get a chromatogram. So you can see uh, the chromatogram of naproxen. So if you are going to get other peak, additional peak other than the naproxen peak, and you can identify, so you can put a question mark like, yes, there is something present in the naproxen. So HPLC is another sophisticated technique that can be used for you know quality control purpose. And the area under the curve will going to tell you the quantum of impurity which is present in the sample or your pharmaceuticals. The so same, I'll take an example of naproxen again. You can see naproxen again, single bone, double bone. So presence of the single bone, double bone, single bone in naproxen and double bone in acrylics can be confirmed with the help of NMR also. So just simply take NMR spectra. If you're getting a single wave bone peak, the peak of these three proton of methyl at uh, somewhere around 1.5, and it is confirmed that it is naproxen. If the, this signal will disappear, and you are you will going to get an additional peak of double bond, then you can see the there is a acrylic acid impurity. Even if you are going to get the two things, you know, like in a mixture situation, the area of the proton will going to change. So you're going to get you may get both the peaks and the area ratio of the both the peak, the single bond and the double bond peak. The single this is double bond peak, single bond peak, and here you will going to get a double bond peak. So this area ratio of single bone and double bone will going to give you, so you can see this additional the single bone and double bone peak will going to give you the ratio of impurity present. That is what, how much percentage the naproxen is and how much percent the acrylic acid is. The exact ratio also you can uh, confirm with the help of NMR. Now, other than this, there are some GCPs, some good clinical practices which are used for quality control of laboratories. Not a, you can say these instruments. How you people will be going to use? How we will going to use these instruments for uh, you know analysis of uh, the quality control of pharmaceutical is also important. So we have to use these WHO good practices, which include four components: the part one, part two, part three, and part four component. The part one is basically start with the management component. 
and the part two it basically it covers the material equipment instrument and devices part three we're going to specify about the working procedure and documents along with the safety in the lab while the part, part four it basically it is concerned with the inspection of the laboratory now glp so this is the reason this glp it is widely used in pharmaceutical laboratories for maintaining the qcs so in the pharm pharmaceutical labs the glp should be is an important criteria which should be followed so the laboratory location should be uh, you know should be located designed customized and maintained to suit it the performance of all qc tests so yes that means you should be having convenience to the you know manufacturing department but you should along with that you you should be having a separate arrangement to avoid vibration dust internal and external external component which will go into you know affect the quality affect the outcome of your quality control so as far as possible there should be you know there must should be a separate wing for analytical instrument microbiology and sterility testing also so the whole other part of this qc department and all being should be interconnected with the internal flow there should be an effective airlock provision for ac and other things also should be there right so this is how you can maintain the glp starting with the lab entry to the final lab exit there are so many other things which are important in order to implement the gl now i would like to add this one important component is 21 cfr part 11 that is very very important as per us fda point of view so if you want your product to be come in compliance with the us fda you need to follow this 21 code of federal regulation so it's a codification which is basically it's a set of some rules general permanent rules published in the federal register so if you want my product to get approval from the fda you need to follow this 21 cfr part 11 which is title 21 is it is basically given to food and drug administration that is FDA. so each title you know of cfr is it is divided once each uh, calendar year what it contain this uh, part 11 so part 11 is basically concerned with the electronic record you know uh, Uh, in quality control it is very important that the system whatsoever you are used for uh, using for the testing even that include your instrument the software the all the things you know, even simple balance also so that should be the record should be maintained and uh, that covers in the part 11 of 21 cfr part, part 11 so as per code federal regulation there are three component of this uh, 21 cfr part 11 which includes sub part a sub part b and sub part c the part a it basically correlates with the uh, with the general provision which includes scope implementation as well as definition while the part b it basically it's a electronic record so you have if you are maintaining whatsoever you are doing everything is recorded you so you can modify anything so in order to prevent the tampering they have many, they have implemented this uh, sub part b which include a control for closed system control for open system signature manifestation or signature or record limit while the third part is basically it's basically electronic signature which are related to the component and control control of identification and password so this part b is very very crucial for implementation or maintaining the quality for as per fda standards now the question arises we have discussed about the quality control component and the various instrument as well as uh, requirement what are the reason of errors in pharmacy uh, this quality control department so if you are going to identify the error the source of error as the first and the most important source is lack of training then there are some other factor which include human factors glasswares uh, reagents improper formulations incorrect analytical processes and poor optimized instrument setting so these are the important factors which were which is which are responsible for error in during analytical operation or quality control so now the question uh, in summary if i am going to say the responsibility of qc it will basically will going to start from raw material to the packing material to the finished product to the intermediates to the solvent and reagent which are used in the formulation of a pharma 
or you can say in the preparation of pharmaceuticals so it include doesn't involve only this preparing specification it also include inspecting sampling and testing of all the raw starting material then performing the stability to access the to assess the st product stability that is also important component this stability testing is also important component simultaneously monitoring environmental condition that also as per cgbmp is another component of you know responsibility of qc other than this preparing analysis report for tested samples and recording and investigating results then uh, which are out of specification calibration of all the laboratory instrument validation of analytical methods then retaining reference uh, samples for each batch of product released to the market along with that participation in any investigation that follows market complaints about the quality of product that also is a important component of qc so that means we have to maintain not only record of uh, starting with the raw material to the final product along with the product which are available in the market for the till the timeline of the product is uh, will be available in the market we have to maintain all the records of that particular product now importance is you know quality control is a sign of trust purity efficacy and reliability and this is very very important in terms of pharmaceutical because we are using pharmaceutical for you know treatment of a particular or some ailments or some diseases so the quality control department and quality control process are necessary to meet the set standard set quality standard so the process which helps pharma companies producing high quality medicine and people avoid undesirable side effects so the presence of even a minor impurity will go into may produce some undesirable side effect so we require product of high quality along with that pharmaceutical company they can cannot convince consumer to buy their product if their medicine doesn't be a certification of authenticity so just for uh, not only for um, authenticity just for creating the trust we require the quality control of the pharmaceutical so all about the quality control process in the product will help pharma company to avoid not only to you know make the product popular but also to avoid the legal issue financial loss and penalties which are associated with the qc pay so finally what we want we want a symbol like this to our product with a sign called as quality control approved and to make our product more reliable not only to end user to the customer but to the all regulatory agencies also thank you so much everyone thanks sir for excellent talk on uh, quality control uh, all the aspects of uh, quality control in, including analytical techniques and uh, fda regulations and uh, other quality control aspects i would like to request to audience if you have any query related to lecture put it on chat box we will definitely reply after discussion with expert thanks to our management director sir iqsc coordinator dr siddharth mehan for hosting this isfcp 101 lecture series uh, to provide valuable knowledge to the audience thanks everyone for patiently watching this lecture please like and subscribe isfcp channel thank you everyone thank you sir thank you so much Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much.